looking at this piece of land to invest in 1100 acres in Virginia and uh, it's a big cornfield one of the big problems in the world bigger than carbon uh, bigger than uh, global warming see how it's lighter up at the top of the hill all the good soil washes to the bottom it's called erosion and more important than solving global warming in the way that you hear about in the media is fixing what's called carbon sequestration basically it means if you protect the soil don't let it erode it binds up in the soil all the things that go into the atmosphere and cause global warming but what made america wealthy was this fertile base of soil which increased uh, economic production at the beginning like in the 17 18 even early 1900s now of course foods imported from all over but a lot of the wealth of the world comes from soil and now you got these harebrained ideas like ethanol instead of using gasoline <laughs> a lot of these regulations have unintended side uh, uh, side effects remember for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction so if you do ethanol quote unquote to save the world well, then they plow up all these fields that are too steep that really should be in pasture or woods they grow corn they destroy the soil they cause erosion the good soil sloughs down here to the bottom and it's very hard to ever fix that by the way and then sure you can not use gasoline in a car and use ethanol but it's like one step forward and two steps backwards so be very careful, um, you know, when you are voting for whether it be a politician or a law, that you really understand what you're voting on, you know? Especially around regulations of Mother Nature. Most people mean well, but cause, you know, true nightmares. Like the whole world's been plowed up for corn. You go to Australia, I mean, I'm sorry, Brazil, the rainforest, why do you think they're plowing it up? And a lot of people think it's just for cows. It's not just for cows. They're plowing it up to plant corn because of subsidies. The government subsidizes corn. That causes other issues. Basically, the rule of thumb is if you don't have to intervene, leave it alone. Some people, Joel Salatin used to say, some people believe in salvation by legislation. Oh, if we just had more laws and more rules, everything would be solved. Anything bad you see, people are like, oh, it's like during the 2008 housing crisis. People are like, they passed this thing called the Dodd-Frank Act, which was basically a way to ensure that financial fraud would be diminished. And it had good intentions, but it causes all other uh, all kinds of problems. Like it runs small mortgage brokers out of businesses and ends up the only people who can keep all the paperwork that the new law requires are big corporations. And they're the ones who caused the fraud in 2008 to start with. So you're trying to solve a problem and you end up literally creating the problem again, just magnified. I'm reading a great book. It's called The Art of Strategy, which talks about game theory. All you entrepreneurs, you need to understand game theory because what game theory says is that you can't just think of life from your side of the story. You have to understand things react. So for example, Dodd-Frank, 2008 housing crisis, six million people lose their home, bankruptcy, people commit suicide, the government sees things from their side of the story like, we'll just fix it by passing some new laws. Well, they forgot to think, what will the other side do? It's kind of like the art of negotiation. If you want to negotiate, you can't just go, oh, I want to buy this house for 250 grand, so it's listed at 300. Let me just tell them I'll only pay 250. Because in a perfect world, they'd have no choice. They would just listen to you and go, okay, well, you want 250, we want a 300, but I guess we got to sell it to you. But in the real world, with game theory, it's kind of like a game. You say, I'll only pay 250. They say, F you, we'll sell it to someone else, get out of my house, and they close the negotiations. And that's why if you read like a book like The Art of War, one of the great business books, it talks a lot about this concept of um, the wise general plans. The wise general sends spies. The wise general wins the battle without fighting, meaning you, he thinks of the negotiation with the other side 
in a way that's favorable to both. It's kind of like what's going on right now with North Korea and Donald Trump negotiating or calling each other names uh, over this whole North Korean missile crisis. If you don't understand game theory and you just start passing laws or saying things rashly, you're, you have to remember they, that causes them to have a reaction. Good example of this in American history where America probably made a big mistake. There's a good documentary by Ken Burns just came out on the Vietnam War. And re but a couple months before that came out, I was reading this fascinating book on the Tet Offensive, which was when America really started to lose the war in Vietnam. And what happened is JFK and even presidents before, they meant well. They thought Vietnam wasn't doing well because of communism coming in. So they sent troops. So you send troops to Vietnam with the good intentions, but you forget game theory. Now all of a sudden you got people in Vietnam that have a foreign quote unquote invader, even if you don't think you're an invader from your side of the story, but what about their side of the story? They don't like it. It'd be like if a whole bunch of you know Chinese troops landed in Los Angeles, people would be freaking out even if they were a quote unquote peace mission. And so what happens is because the powers that be at that time and over time in the Vietnam War, like Lyndon Johnson and uh, what was his guy, McNamara or whatever, one of these, the, the, the Secretary of Defense, they made huge mistakes. You ended up having 250,000 American troops I think were, were wounded, 50,000 were killed, or 58,000. Mm -hmm. McNamara, all these people, what good intentions probably, they ended up causing calamity. I saw one of the interviews with a North Korean soldier, he said, people often ask, who won the Vietnam War? And he said, people ask that question have never been to war. No one wins a war, it's just destruction. I thought that was an interesting statement. And uh, anyway, so you gotta be smart in life, I guess is the whole gist of everything I'm talking about. You gotta have a little insight into the world. You have to have the ability. So I tell people to travel. By traveling, you get to see both sides of the story, how the world is, you know? That's why I'm such a big fan of some level of disruption of the current education system because the current education system doesn't talk about things like I'm talking about very well. And if they do, they communicate them in a boring way so nobody remembers them. Again, people go, look at the education system with forced testing. They thought they'd make schools better by requiring, by judging schools by how well they do. Oh, deer. Look how many deer there are. Holy crap. Away. How many deer was that, Kate? Ten. Ten or twenty? Oh. More. Got to Snapchat that. Put, put, post this, Nathan. Put uh, ten deer running away. Ten deer jumped up. Snapchatting. But modern education system. They said, oh, we'll just pass laws that you only you're judged by how you do on standardized tests. They forgot that every action has an opposite equal reaction, so guess what happens? Teachers start focusing just on making their students pass the test, not making them have real comprehension. And there it is, there's some more. So the whole school system becomes about memorization and then dumping it. I call it pump and dump. <laughs> that comes from a different different uh, background, but I, that's what I'm reminded of. You basically pump information in students' brains so they memorize it just long enough to pass a test, not long enough to understand it or utilize the information, and then they dump it out of their brain because they got another test the next week. So you create a system of just automaton robots that are good at pump and dump facts in, in and out of their brain. It's just, again, people meant well, a lot of school teachers mean well, a lot of policymakers meant well, but they weren't using their brain and understanding Every action is opposite and equal reaction. Are you tired yet? Nope. She's worried about bugs. <laughs> what bugs were there? Um, there are spiders and ticks. Yeah. You see a t There's a tick on you! No! <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Nothing scares people more than teeny bugs. Isn't that funny how people are? It's like, not afraid of okay, all the- spiders can be poisonous. Spiders can be poisonous, but people, yeah. People will text while they drive. And that's a 
6,000 pound SUV and they're not afraid of that <laughs> but they're super afraid of the one in a million people that die from a spider bite in the US <laughs> That's true. another thing common sense that's called the bias of basically there's a problem in our brain it's called the availability bias things that are easily understandable like spiders being a harm to your health because that was an ancient one for thousands of years that's been passed on in your genes to have natural fear of certain things snakes and spiders even babies have but cars there's no evolutionary memory for it because they're brand new so people don't fear those even though that's what most people die from this is a cool little pasture in here you could build a house back in here whenever i'm looking at land i'm always thinking how can i improve not only the quality of the soil and the land for bio biological purposes but also from a business standpoint, how can you make the land more valuable to people, which increases its financial value? Nothing wrong about th with thinking in more than from more than one perspective, you know. Yeah, this is a cool little hillside up here. For those of you listening on my podcast or, or now I'm on Spotify, you're gonna hear a lot of. I'm not gonna see what I'm talking about, but it's all right. You can always watch this on YouTube or Facebook. Mark, are you talking to yourself up there? No, I think subtextually they'll know when oh. you're speaking. They can imagine it in their mind. I thought Mark had gone live, uh, <laughs> had gone insane on this. <laughs> I know. I was he like, was up there no, talking to himself. <laughs> time with <laughs> this yeah, has I think a, it's better video too. a ton of great, great trees in here. Those are this area. That's called locust right there. It's a great tree. One of the sad things. One of the greatest trees in history is extinct. It was something called wormy chestnut. And a lot of the houses here, when America came, I mean, when settlers came to America, it's basically a wood that never rots with no chemicals. Joel Salatin's house was built in 1700s, around the time America became a country. And he never had, the wood's still as strong as ever. But wor wormy chestnut got killed, killed by a blight, so it's all gone. Locust is a kind of a, second rate version of it it's pretty good locust is also a cool tree because in the soil it actually builds the soil it has these little nodules it's called a legume just like soybeans just like alfa uh, alfalfa clover so sometimes mother nature knows how to repair itself by having these they call them high succession value trees higher quality although a lot of oak in here too let's go down in here who wants to go in the woods hopefully it ain't honey season yet or we need an orange jacket so you don't get shot mark you're gonna be no match for a dude sitting in the stand with a 30 30. i got it right here first time i ever went hunting i went with a 30 odd six that's like a cat cannon this is like a world war one world war two cannon you don't really want to hunt with one. It's too powerful. <laughs> if you want to fight, shoot elephants. You know, I saw a news article that an elephant killed somebody in 19, like 17, and they hung it like a person wow. as its punish punishment. Oh God. God, people have been weird in history. Yeah. No, they needed a chain and a crane. That's, See, what did I just say? What? what did I say? These, these trees yep. are dying. So a lot of people think it's bad to cut down trees. I'm like, look at this tree right here. You can see, I think this is a, let me look at what kind of tree it is. Is it a poplar or oak? But anyway, look how it, it might've got struck by lightning. Yeah, sure did. <sighs> so things die. People don't understand that. People teach their school, take, you take kids nowadays and they protect them so much from everything People don't grow up and know how the real world works. Sometimes stuff gets hit by lightning. That's why it's good to be on a farm as a child. You see that things die. People in the modern world, you ask them where, you know, yogurt comes from. They'll be like, uh, it comes from, uh, Vons. It comes from the store. <laughs> People are disconnected. That's why even if you live in the city, never spend 100% of your time in the city. I don't care, I was just in New York City right before this. You gotta have time away. And you have to be, in the modern world, 
you have to be careful to not be overstimulated. There's social media, there's TV, there's Netflix, there's movies, there's parties, there's like, you know, everything's like only a step away. It's at your fingertips, so people never can just sit down, read, think. You have to spend at least a couple hours a day really thinking through what you're doing in life. Reading, learning, listening, pen and paper, planning, like a general, the general of your life. The wise general has a plan and knows how to take action. Because sometimes people are like, oh, Ty, you say people should read. Well, if you just read, all you're gonna do is get book smart, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're, people are so stupid on this conversation. I'm like, really? You really think what I'm suggesting is just read? Do I look like I never do anything? Why can't you do both? <laughs> it's like you can have your cake and eat it too. You can live on a farm, you can be quiet, you can read, you can plan, you can be introverted, and you can learn to be extroverted, which is action-oriented, outward world-oriented. You can be in big cities. I was just in New York City two nights ago. Massive farm. I mean, this thing is big. Here, we gotta walk this way and make our loop back. Joel Southton always tells me, the reason everybody fat in America and nobody walks. I did this interview years ago with a guy who wrote a book called, oh look, something got eaten right there. Oh no, no, that's, no, that's a plant, that's thistle. Um, I interviewed a guy named Lieberman. He's a Harvard professor of paleoanthropology and he studies, he, he, the book is called The Story of the Human Body. It's a great one if you wanna pick it up and it's about, health um what it, looking back at how our body evolved what are the things we need to do to be healthy and one of them he said is walk six miles a day that was his recommendation which the average person you ever seen that movie you ever seen that movie mark called uh the gods must be crazy yeah <laughs> in that movie they're like they get in their car back down the lane their driveway get the mail out of the mailbox and then drive back home so they don't have to walk. That's how, but you can't believe how many people won't walk anywhere. That's why one reason Europeans are not so fat. They, you gotta walk, man. One of the things that this Lieberman said, the way our bodies are designed, um, the way our hips are opened up, that's what made us bipedal compared to, you know, gorillas and things like that, that, that or chimpanzees that walk on all fours. And our, the way our legs, so we're designed to walk even more than run. And joggers, people who jog too much, their whole body falls apart. You're built to do what physical uh, personal trainers call HIT, high intensity interval training, where basically you walk, sprint, rest, walk. Very few times in history did people have to just jog for 30 miles, and if they did, they're on uneven surfaces, which cause less joint damage than just running on the concrete. Remember, every action has opposite and equal reaction. So if you go, oh, I'm gonna get healthy by just running on the sidewalk outside of my house five miles, well, your body has an equal reaction to it. Mother nature laughs last. You gotta be curious, study what is your body built to do. It's kinda like in business to be successful. I was with my uh, business partner, Sam Ovens, and he said one of the big, he became a self-made millionaire by, I think 26 years old, and started a company at 22, first one failed, built another one, and he said, one of the big mistakes he, he forgot was, he would start businesses around what he wanted to sell, he forgot to build a business around an existing desire that people already want. It's always, I always say it's better to sell to the willing. So people don't understand game theory, they don't understand anything I've talked about in the stock. They just think from a narcissistic, egocentric uh, place. They build businesses that they're their only customer. And they, you can guess how much money you make if you're your only customer. You could even charge a million dollars for the product. But if you're paying yourself a million dollars, you still only have the same amount of money as you started on day one. Woo, it's a steep hill. Okay, Nathan, interval training. Who's sprinting to the top? Kate. 
Kate slept 12 hours. Oh, I needed it. Okay, let's let's see. Put the uh, bag. Nathan, you versus Kate. Take your bag here for you. Nathan's a military man. No, he's gonna beat me. To the top and back. Yeah, you can touch the fence and then come back. Now remember, it will be very funny on cameras if you guys trip on the way back and no. roll all the way. Okay, so here's the race. It's oh gonna be Kate God. against Nathan. Run to the top, up there, to the fence. Run back, full speed. Hopefully you fall, because it'll be amazingly funny. <laughs> no. no? To see you guys rolling all the way down? On your marks. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Here, hold this. He's gonna be, uh, can I get a head start? Why? Because he's a guy and he's in the military. Don't be sick. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, let's see. On your marks. Oh, mine is a tight. <laughs> Get set, go! Kate, do not let Nathan beat you. Kate's pushing. Oh, yeah. Kate is pushing. <laughs> For those of you listening, not watching, this is a race to the top. Okay, you gotta come all the way down. It's easy down. The race was... Now they're stopped at the top. I'm now so- gotta come back down. This is my favorite part. Here, hold this. <laughs> Faster! Faster! Roll. Go on. <laughs> Nathan, you're losing! Can you hold it? Yeah. Nathan, you're losing! Just point it directly. Kate, don't stop! You have to run past me. Nathan, I'm disappointed. You represent the military. 